All right, Shalom. This is gonna be a lesson, overdue lesson on the pay periods, right, of the new covenant, if you will. It's basically two pay periods, all right. And the way we know this is because the promises is gonna be pretty much issued out to us or given out to us, paid out to us, like a pay. You know, the promises being another word for the inheritance. And uh, we know this according to when you read Ephesians 1 and 9, you know, and down. So we're going to go ahead and get into this to show this really quick, Lord will, you know, and precise, concise to the point. But before we do, call her law, Mla, Yahweh, Baha, Shem, Yahweh, Shai, Wahara, Kachodash. That's all praises to the Most High in the name of His Son and the Holy Spirit. Shalom to all you brothers, mean and peace. And to you, sisters. Are right, you Achim, Achim and Aquatium. And uh, Shalom to all the true brothers, the true ministers of the new covenant, brothers that have truly been enabled into ministering this new covenant out to our people for the remission of sins um, and the receiving of the inheritance and salvation and all the, you know, effects, positive effects of the new covenant. So Shalom. All right, all, to all you believers and those listening, converting across the four corners of the globe. Nonetheless, regardless, Shalom. All right, so this is Ephesians 1 and 9. We make this clear. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. So the secrets regarding how the Lord is going to do things, what he wants to do. is is, is a, 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 He obviously has a method, and that's not known to everybody. So having made known to, unto us the mystery of his will. So how do we know this? Because these things have been revealed unto us. These things are for us to know. When you read Deuteronomy, just to get it, 29 and 29. See, this goes back to the first covenant, the covenant of Moab. But anyway, uh, Deuteronomy 29 and 29, it says, the, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of his law and those law that law goes back to covenant all right that law is in the covenant that's talking about the first covenant but it's a law in the new covenant too all right which is the second covenant all right so <clears throat> these things have been revealed now how do they get revealed you got the usual you know the lord will do it and do do it nothing but he revealed his secrets unto his servants the prophets so it's a chain of command pretty much on how these things that we are to know as Israelites are going to get out, you know. So that started with the disciples who became apostles, who were, became known as the pillars of the church. And then they were to preach uh, uh, out the ultimate of those secrets, uh, which is the gospel, because they was told to preach the gospel. Right. And the scriptures talk about the gospel, the gospel is a mystery then you know the mystery of the fellowship of the gospel um when you read um ephesians 6 and 19 and then for and for me that utterance may be given unto me right the way that you could bring out these secrets it has to be given unto you right <clears throat> you have to be of the elect right and that that i you got to be an israelite but you got to be you know, a chosen Israelite. It says that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. So exactly. So that's the chain of command. It start the disciples, the apostles became the apostles. You know, sets of apostles and disciples, and uh, pretty much they would they would have those those the mystery of the gospel revealed unto them to where they would be given utterance to where they have utterance to be able to speak it, and that's why the Lord told them. Uh, he told us to go and preach it because it's going to pretty much tell us what to do and what's going on, first and foremost, with the will. All right. Hence the new covenant. Why? Because it holds our inheritance, our prom the promises unto us. That's why it's known as the will. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. And that's what the New Testament is known as. When you read uh, Hebrews in the ninth chapter, like the 14th verse on down to like the 16th in the NLT, it makes that clear. All right, the, the Testament, 
is of a force after, you know, the testator, you know, is dead. And then NLT, it tells us um, pretty much it is necessary to prove, you know, when a, where there is a will, where there is a will, it is, it is necessary to prove that the one who made it is, 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 is dead. You know, roughly paraphrase. You can read those scriptures in the KJV and the NLT and um, Hebrews 9 and 14 or down to 16, I believe. All right. But anyway, so having made known to us, so this is how this all happened. But we're going to get the specifics. How? Because it's more than, well, how how did the information get part, imparted up to them? Like, how how was they able how was they able to receive it? It's going to get into it. Having made known to us um, the mystery of his will according to the good his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Hamashiach, right? Who's the new covenant, Hamashiach, who you know is Christ. Who some of you know, may know as Christ out there, both of which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom we have obtained. We have obtained an inheritance. That's the elect. See, an inheritance. You so if you if you in Hamashiach, right, you somehow obtain the inheritance, thus showing you he's holds that will he's that will he's that new covenant because <laughs> the, the 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 inheritance the promises is in obviously the will a will hence the new covenant so in whom also we have obtained an inheritance that's the only way to get it because the new testament which holds the inheritance the promises is in his blood see that <laughs> so if you have him you will have his blood if you have his blood you have the New Testament. If you have the New Testament, the New Covenant, you have the promises, the inheritance. It's that simple. You can't separate them. All right, he made that clear. That's why he said, this is the New Testament in my blood. All right. Being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So that's how you get it, right? You get the inheritance through a you know, being in him, ultimately, uh, if you're in him, you have his blood. All right. Uh, hence, the new covenant. It says, because that's how covenants is activated, blood. All right. That's how the first one was. So it says that we should be the first, that we should be the, to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Hamashiach. He has the first fruits, those that first believed. Right. Um, that that was the way to the promises, the inheritance, the promises given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our forefathers. Everyone of the Israelites, everyone of, his, of of those descendants, did believe that. They didn't. They didn't think that was the way. So all didn't obtain it. So that's why it says we have obtained. Hence, this particular body of individual Israelites, descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they 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 did what they need to do. But it was they were ultimately elected to that. It was because their name was actually in the will. Their name was in the Lamb's Book of Life, slain from the foundation of the earth. That Lamb is is nothing more than saying blood. All right. So if your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, that means you was written in the promise. You know, you was written in the will to receive the promises of the. The will maker or the, the testator. All right. To where you get all those things. So if it's not, you ain't going to get it. It's just like a family. Like if you're not in that family, it don't matter you on the earth. No matter if you if you knew this person was around this person. No matter if you heard about the will. If your name not written in the will, you're not going to receive those promises. So that's how the elect, these individuals that's known as the elect, was ultimately, are ultimately, hence us, able to uh to obtain to have been able to be to be able to say we have obtained you know have written about us we have obtained because why we believe we we, we 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 were given a way to obtain but we had to hear it first we had and we had to be given that thing we had to hear you know and then uh 
us that were to hear it, to go speak it, would have to be given that utterance to be able to go do that for the rest of those that are uh, heirs, joint heirs. All right. Heirlooms to the throne, if you will. So anyway, in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of this, the, the truth, the gospel of your salvation, new covenant effect, in whom also after that ye believed, ye, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. See, with that Holy Spirit of promise. That's another word for inheritance. So the Holy Spirit is of the inheritance. So if you once you get the Holy Spirit, you got some of the inheritance, which is all in the new covenant. See that? Which is the earnest of our inheritance. See that? And that earnest means down payment until the redemption. All right. Which that's going to lead us to, to the point. But let's get that word earnest real quick. Our bond in the Greek. Strong's G 728. Arabon. Arabon. Money which in purchases is given as a pledge or down payment that the full amount will subsequently be paid. So there you go. A strong definition, a pledge, an example, part of the, the par part of the purchase money. See that? This is the first pay period. Once you get the Holy Spirit or property given in advance as security, right? You know, it's of the inheritance because what's passed down by uh, uh, those that make wills. Property, lands, different things, things is just of the of the of the of the, uh, the property of another, right? And us that you know of that promise, that lineage we inherited. But anyway, it says given in advance as security for the rest. All right, so. So when you go down, it just gives it again. You know, that's exactly what it is. All right. It is both a foretaste and pledge, right, of future blessedness. So it's the first part, right? It's a piece of, it's the first payout, if you will. It's like that first week check of the, uh, the pay you're going to actually you know, know you are to be getting. It's the first taste of it. All right, so this is the, the down payment. All right, it's the first pay. So this is how you're able to know this because the Holy Spirit, which teaches you all things, would be the thing to where these individuals who were the disciples who became apostles would become built and positioned to hear and receive these things because you can't hear and receive these things without the Holy Spirit to where you, you so so that's that right on the further level so you get told and then you believe it which that faith is of a gift that's already in you so that goes off at that point, but then simply you labor, do what you need to do. You profess, repent, um, believe in the blood for the forgiveness of your sins. And then at that point, you eventually see the, receive the Holy Spirit. You're going to know about the fruits. And at that point, you were able to be brought in on the heavenly knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, which is the things that the Holy Spirit has to offer. Hence, the way to where the mystery of the gospel is revealed to where now you know exactly what's up with the new covenant, you know, and you can't be tricked or told anything otherwise by anybody else who don't understand it, but they may speak on it like we're not in it or since we don't got a body, this, 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 this we're not, it's not here, all these different things, the, the Messiah, he's living so if he's not dead, so the, the covenant is not of a force, you're not going none of you're not going to be beguiled by any of those things. <laughs> you're going to know, OK, this is what's up. And then we are in the new covenant. I am in the new covenant, you know, 
But upon having the Holy Spirit, you need no man to teach you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to teach you all things and it's truth as it tells us. All right. So, you know, what, what's that? First John, second chapter, I believe. All right. So <clears throat> at that point, you know what? Okay. The only way, the reason why I don't have this yet, but yet the new covenant is said to be had, but yet it doesn't appear like it in certain ways because it's all, it's only, right now we're in the first pay period of the new covenant, from the new covenant. You only receive in that right now, and that's the Holy Spirit. The rest of all that other stuff, the carnal stuff, the future blessings, the rest of the promises, they come at the end. That's the second period, pay period. <laughs> All right. That's the rest of the pay, if you will. So like I said, it's two pay periods, basically. <laughs> but you need the first in order to even get to the second. You know, because this first being the Holy Spirit is 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 gonna get you right inwardly to where you can receive those things outwardly. It's inward outward, like the Lord said. Make first clean, make clean first the inward of the cup. What's gonna do that? The Holy Spirit. How? Because the Holy Spirit is gonna guide you. <laughs> it's gonna teach you how to clean yourself. You know. It's gonna have it to where you're led directly. And you're in position, you're led directly to the, the rest of the, the promises, to where you receive them, and you're in position for them. It's that simple. All right? So when you go back and you read Ephesians 1 and 13, I'm going to read through 14 again. That's the point. Whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of the truth of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believe ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our of our inheritance. So the Holy Spirit is of the inheritance. And it's the it's the earnest meaning the down payments, the first payout. First thing you pay. Because it's going it's inward. It's to get you to where you can get the hour because it is, it's something inward being given to you. That's the Holy Spirit. That's a new covenant effect to where you the hour is going to be made clean as well. You can't you can't even have you can't even have the. Um, for instance, you can't even have. Most don't even understand this because they ain't got the Lord ain't give them the Holy Spirit. You can't even get the new covenant. I mean, the the, the 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 mortal body. You know, except you have that Holy Spirit within you. Why? Because that Holy Spirit is said to uh, be the thing to quicken your mortal body. That's the only way. All right. Let me grab that real quick. Romans eight and eleven. It says what? But if the Spirit if but if the spirit of him, right, that raised up Yahweh Shah, or you know who you may know as Jesus from the dead, dwell in you, which is what the Holy Spirit. All right, and that Holy Spirit is basically the Lord; it's a portion of His Spirit. That's why He's able to say He's gonna, He's going to be with you unto the end, and at that point, that's a sign that He's in you. To where you going to overcome. And you get that rest of that inheritance. But as it goes on to say, to keep stay to the point. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shah from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Hamashiach, or who you may know as Christ from the dead, shall also, see, quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in that dwelleth in you. So, in order to have the quickened body, which is that new body, that outward part, the rest of the promises, the thing that most men only like look to when it comes to knowing they're in the new covenant, which is a mortal, immortal body, body can't perish, 
uh, incorruptible body or whatever carnally. The only way to get to that is if you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to lead you to that. That's the inward hour. That's why he said make clean the inward that the hour may also be clean. All right. It says, uh, let's get that real quick. Luke 11 and let me grab this locky. Let's get this one. Matthew 23 and 26. It says, um, let's start at 25. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye may clean, ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter. But within, they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, clean first, clean first, clean first. See, the first is two pay periods. The first part is receiving the Holy Spirit, the inward thing. Clean first that which is within the cup. What's the cup? You. How is that being done? The blood and the Holy Spirit to get you the Holy Spirit, receiving the new covenant. Hence, having the Holy Spirit, it says, and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. There you go. So, in order to get that, that quickened mortal body, you have, hourly, you have to have that quickening spirit inwardly, which is what? The Holy Spirit in the NLT. You blind Pharisee, first wash the inside of the cup and the dish, and the outside will become clean too. There you go. And that dish part is just going into their appearance. The cup is dumb, and then the decorations is all the stuff they, they do to try to, you know, they, a presentation basically. So when we go back to uh, Romans 8 and 11 But if the spirit of him that raised up your house Shall from the dead dwell in you He that raised up Hamashiach from the dead Shall also quicken your mortal bodies By his spirit That dwelleth in you See that? So in order to get the outer body The quicken body The new bodies You have to have The Holy Spirit within you Inward first Outward last. There is no outward without the inward. So that's pretty much that. So when we go back to Ephesians 1 and uh 10, it's like it, 1 and 13, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard at the, after that ye heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believe ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Which is the earnest of our inheritance Until the redemption See that's the point now Until the redemption I mean that's the first part But it says Now it says Until the redemption Of the purchased possession Until the rest So you get worked on inwardly First And that's what you are to deal with that's what you are to eat off, live off. That first pay, payout. That was the Holy Spirit of the new covenant. Until the second pay, which is, or the rest of the pay, which is what? The physical, the physicality of everything. The new body, the physical salvation. These different things. It says, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. It's that simple. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is get the. So now what I want to show to show this is this is saying this because when you go to verse ten, Ephesians one and ten, that in a dispensation, right? What does dispensation mean? It's paying this. So it, the Lord is saying, right? Let me start at nine again. Having made known to us the mystery of His will, that this is how this works. The new covenant works. Like what's going on with the new covenant? How we how we uh, are. We're on our way to get in the physical part. It's through holy, having the Holy Spirit, which we know this now because we have the Holy Spirit, which teach you all things. It's the only thing that can get you uh, informed 
on what's going on regarding heavenly things. That's why it brings heavenly knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You know? Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness, see, of the fullness, this is why we say we're in the new covenant fully, but we don't have the fullness, right? We're completely in the new covenant. We just don't have the fullness of it all yet because why? It's different. It's, it's two pay periods. You got the spiritual, then you got the carnal. You got the inward, the outward. You know, but anyway, it says that in the disposition of the fullness of times, and you need the spiritual first to get to the hour. All this, the spirit world made the carnal world. It's, 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 it's impossible to, 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 to have it any other way. It says that in the disposition. So if you're not being spiritual, that's why the Lord said, if you, be, if you don't be born again, you ain't going to see the kingdom. If you're not being spiritual, you it don't matter if you're hearing this. You're not even going to be in position to get that the rest of the, uh, the, the pay. You know, the carnal pay is you haven't even signed up yet first. You haven't even went through the process. You're not going through the procedure. You know, it's like then you're going to get paid by a company, but you ain't even applied yet. You ain't repented yet. You ain't even, you You just, you're going to be out of here. You know, out, out, out. You know, it says that in the disposition of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all, see, things in Hamashiach. So obviously some things is in Hamashiach now. It's in the new covenant, it says both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him. Now it says the fullness of times, right? But the key word I want to get right there is disposition. <laughs> All right? When you go into that word disposition, that meaning like handing out, paying out, issuing out. All right? So he's talking about the, that in the disposition of the fullness of times. <laughs> When he's ready to, when it's time for the fullness of the new covenant, if you will, to come the rest of the pay. When he's ready to disposit, uh, uh, the disposition of that. See that? When you go into that word, disposition. Strong's G, 3622, Oikonomia. Oikonomia. Yeah, man. Uh, so, administrate. That's when you like giving something out, right? You handling something. And it said household or estate. Now, you're going to that word. Dispensation. It says what? I'm going to jump down to the point. The action number three of dis di distributing or distributing. Or supplying something, distribution, provision, providing, supply. Let's jump down to the, the clear ones, right? Passing around, passing out, giving out, handing out, dealing out, sharing out, dividing out. When he's about to divide out, hand out. So he, this is exactly what it's, t it's telling you. The Lord is, this is regarding, this chapter is regarding uh, the issuing out of the promises, the handing out of the promises. The process of that. The first part is the Holy Spirit. The fullness, meaning the rest of it, or all of it, the Holy Spirit, the inward part and the carnal part together, uh, is 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 also what this is concerning, because it's talking about when all of that is about to be handed out. The fullness of it, meaning that not only the the spiritual part that will have to have come first, but the car the carnal the spiritual part that will have to come first. If I said carnal salakia. So I mean, sorry, but also the carnal part. He's ready to hand all that out. See that? That's why it goes on to say that in the disposition of the fullness of times, he might gather together and want all things. All things. See, all of it in Hamashiach, new covenant. Both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated. We have obtained an inheritance. We have obtained a part of the promise, some of the pay, being predestinated to according to the purpose of him who, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Right. So things work out how you say they work out. You get the, the Holy Spirit by believing in Messiah, confessing your sins, believing in the blood, you know, 
and laboring for that wisdom, if you will. All right. To be proved, to, to be worthy of it. It says that we should be the be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in whom I shot and whom ye also and whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of the truth of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And whom also after that ye believe ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. All right. So we can go ahead and just shut this down, though, to show, show you this. This is Second uh, John 1 and 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not the, those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Because we already received some of it. Right? That's clearly what it's telling you. Alright? Because look, this is 2nd Ezra 2. And let's start at, let me jump to the point 35. But be, be ready to the reward of the kingdom. See the reward of the kingdom. That's showing you there's other rewards. The Holy Spirit. Alright? And what uh, it says, For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. And when do we get that? That's during the last days. All right, but real quick, I don't want to uh, jump the gun. Slot, let me grab this one real quick. Let's get that word. Real. Get that word reward. You seen it. Strong's G, 3408. Strong's G, 3408. Mistos. Wages. Mistos. Higher. Reward. Use of the fruit naturally resulting from toils and endeavors. That's crazy, man. See that? It says pay for a service. That's exactly it. So to receive the rest of our uh, 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 pay. Thus showing you we're paid. The, the, new, the new covenant is, is, is paid out to us, you know, at different times, first and foremost, mainly, but in two different ways, spiritually and carnally, spiritually first. That's the first pay. All right. How do we know? Going back to second Ezra 3 and uh, 33, I, Ezra, received a charge of the Lord upon my Oreb that I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they set me at naught and despised the commandment of the Lord because they didn't like hearing this. And therefore, some of them that don't like it now are the same ones you was talking about then. And therefore, I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand. Look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest. For he is nigh at hand that shall come in the end of the world. That's, the, that's a pay period, the end of the world. It says, B, that's also a pay period, the end of the world, right? But did the Lord not already come? Right? Because when he came, it was said to be what? The end, the last days. You know? Hebrews 1. So you'd be like, because you don't want to take that like we ain't seen the shepherd yet. This is uh, Hebrews 1 and 1, God who has sundry times in a diverse manner spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, right? Those that had the, the secrets revealed unto them, hence disciples uh, turned apostles. See that? The mysteries revealed unto them to where they would have utterance to give uh, uh, those things that are re revealed to the rest of the, you know, the inheritors, the children. Those whose names that's also written just like theirs in the, in the will of the Lord, the New Testament, the last book of life. Anyway, it says to receive their promises, right? It says, so they get told this holy knowledge, this heavenly knowledge, wisdom, understanding to where, because it's a, it's a thing, it's things in the will that are written out by the will maker or the testator that must be followed and for it. In order for the person who is written in there to receive those things that will maker or testator has to give out to them. But they got to follow them and they got to first they got to hear them, they got to know about them and they got to understand them. And then they got to do it in order to get it. At this age, you must do this in order to get this once I'm gone. And once he's gone, that person got to do that. 
in order to receive that. So that's where the prophets, the disciples, <coughs> come in at as far as handing it out. It's heavy too, because when you think about it, when someone died at left a will, it's always a person that's in charge of the will. Like as far as like making sure the, the will is played out and, and they to where that's the person that understand it, know it, understand it, and they, they basically are to tell the rest that are to know and understand it because it got things in it that concern them to where they can get those promises. They basically tell them to apply. So that person would be like what the prophets or the disciples who became apostles were and are. But anyway, this is the point. Hath in these last days spoken unto us whom he had uh, by his son, meaning Yahweh Shah, whom he had appointed heir of all things. By whom, so he's the will holder. By whom also he made the world. So that's why he said, believe in me. This is how you want to get life. Believe in me. So that tells you right there. That's the first, that's one of the first parts. And how do you do that? Believing in the blood. And at that point, that's obviously a thing to where you'll get some a part of the inheritance, which is what? The Holy Spirit. That's why he said right here. In John 6 and 54, it says what? Verse 53, Yahweh, then Yahweh shall say unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Exactly. Ain't no covenant without blood. It says, Who so eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. Exactly. And I will, and there it is. You got it. You in the world, you're gonna get the promises. And then you get so you have the eternal life. How do you have that? By that Holy Spirit. Inwardly first. And then it says, and after semicolon, separate cause. This is a separate clause right here. Two separate things. So this is a separate clause right here, what we about to read. And I will raise him up at the last day. So you get the inward part and then you get the physical part. That raise up at the last day is talking about what? The second payment. The carnal mortal body being quickened. When it, the chariots come deliver us, change our bodies, quick, give us the quickened mortal bodies by that Holy Spirit that was supposed to be had by the individual within first. You see that? And that when is that? part going to happen at the last day. So this, this this part right here is supposed to be before then. See that? That eternal life. So that's the first pay and the last day is the the, the, uh, the second pay. So when you go back to Hebrew 2nd Ezra 2 and 34 and therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen that hear and understand, look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest for he is nigh at hand that shall come in the end of the world. So this really manifold. See that? Because in order to get that everlasting rest, which is is talking about the carnal the final payout, right? The last, the latter payout, the second payout, if you will, you have to get the first part. You have to have that spiritual part done first. See that? Be so it goes on to say, be ready to the reward of the kingdom. That's reward of the kingdom. So there's different rewards. Hence pays, payouts, which which is what? It's the only thing we're being paid out. Promises. And our inheritance. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you ever for of shine upon you forevermore. So when you go back here, you should understand now. Second John 1 and 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought. See that work for and earn and God already, the Holy Spirit, first payout, right? But that we receive a full reward. So you want to get that. We stacking right now. You know what I'm saying? You want to get that Holy Spirit and the rest, the carnal part. You want to get the rest, the full, you want to get the fullness, the rest, the, 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 the rest of it, man. The second pay, not just the first payout. All right, and NLT, watch that you do not lose what we have worked so hard to achieve. Exactly. Be diligent so that you will receive your full reward. Heaven. First Peter 1 and 9. Receiving the end 
of your faith. What's the first part of your faith? The Holy Spirit. That's what you are to receive in the first part. If there's an end, there's a beginning. What's the beginning? After you have believed. Oh, that go back to Ephesians. <laughs> it says in the beginning. I think it say that. Let me see real quick. Uh, let me see. Up. Oh, you know what? That's tough too. Because I take you here. I take you to this. That's the long as one. One and um. Yep. One and um. Eight. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians one and eight. Right and uh, seven. And to to you who are trouble rest with us when the Lord shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, take vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Right. Who shall be right? You supposed to do something to get the inheritance, to get the payout, right? You supposed to have a certain work to get that inheritance. That's why you say every man getting the reward, because everybody gonna get with everybody working for something. You know what I'm saying? Despite if they know it or not. But anyway, and your work supposed to be obeying the gospel. What does that look like? In order to be saved when he get here and not destroyed. Believing, hence the new covenant, the blood. Working inwardly first. Receiving that which and applying that and letting that be which is for the inward for the be for the inward. So the Holy Spirit is not for just recreational use. It says, Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his powers to point when he shall come to be glorified and his saints to be admired and all of them that believe because our testimony was believed among you was believed in that day at the beginning. So now we here at the end when he gives back. And it's, it's this different things is going to be going on. So the beginning, if you believe you got the Holy Spirit. To where you on point when he get here at the end, right? The end of the end to where you, uh, or the end to where now you can get the rest of the payout. You know? Well, then that's to be admired and glorified and, 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 and you know, had those that recompense, recomp re uh, those that troubles you recompensed, you and you say. So anyway, 1 Peter 1 and 9, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. That's the rest. Because when we say what happens, that's what goes back to John 6 and 54 or 53 through 54. You get the eternal life, but then at the last day, you raised up. <laughs> Hence, you're saved. You get the quickened body. But how? Through receiving. That's the, and that's what? The second pay. But through what? The first pay. The Holy Spirit. You can't get the, the quickened body without the Holy Spirit. So receiving the end of your faith, being paid out that as well, that second pay. The carnal part, even the salvation of your soul. So right now, you should be getting paid spiritually. That's why I say, I know your poverty, but thou art rich. Spiritually. If carnally, you ain't got those parts yet because we ain't been paid that yet, man. But in order to get paid that, you need to have the spiritual riches. In order to go get rich, you got to have knowledge to do it. You have to have the knowledge, understanding, and the wisdom to do it. So the Lord is perfect. The way he's doing this is so perfect, man. You know, Hebrews 4 and 1. Let us therefore less fear, lest a promise, less a promise being left us of entering his rest. Any of you should seem to come short Short of it, like short of some money. You got some of the money, though, obviously. So what's, what is this talking about? It's two parts of the pay. You get that spiritual part, you better make sure you're going to, you, to, you better make sure you're going to get that physical. That's the point of you being given it, man. Now, one check gets you to another. You just got to do right with it. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as, as unto them, but the word, but the word preached unto preached them, but the word preached did not profit them, 
See, but the word preach did not profit them. This heavenly knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is revealing of the mystery that was of the gospel, of his will, of the New Testament. That was revealed unto us, was not believed, was not obeyed by them. It's not being obeyed by everybody. They won't accept it for what it is to where they can use it and get the rest of that carnal payment that people want to act like the new covenant only consists of or comes down to. And it doesn't. It's two pays. See that? And everybody ain't even getting paid the first part. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So there you go, man. So it's, 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 that, it's that simple for it. We which have believed do enter into rest. Exactly. You got to believe inwardly first to enter into that physical rest. Exactly. And we're out. As he said, I have sworn as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. It's the only way. So with that, it's just two pay periods. Call them like how about me? I'm shower, how about Lord, when you be edified, shalom.